Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Jack Chang here and today we're going to do yet another property review. It is Pavilion Ceylon Hills. And first, Pavilion Ceylon Hills, we're actually very close to uh, Changkat Bukit Bintang. Right behind here, approximately 200 to 500 meters, uh, a lot of FNB. Very, very happening hotspot uh, for FNB. You have Havana, you have Bijan, basically a, a potpourri of international cuisine, yeah, right behind here. And if you go slightly further, you actually have Jalan Allah, the street food, and that's approximately about one kilometer away only. So really, really happening place. Uh, going back to Pavilion Ceylon Hills, <laughs> this is actually the third floor. There are two entrances. So this is the drop-off for Block B and Block C, or rather Zone A and Zone B. It's only a single block, this whole development. Yeah, and the other side, the other road, is actually ground floor. Uh, that's Jalan Raja Ceylon, I think. Okay, I can't really recall the name, but here is basically Jalan Bukit Ceylon. And this is the third floor. So the other side is the ground floor, and that's the drop off for zone A. This is the drop off for zone B and C. Uh, going back to this Pavilion Ceylon Hills, so there are a total of 629 units. The smallest is 660 plus minus square feet, one bedroom and one bathroom. And the largest is 1,366 square feet. Uh, it's a dual key unit, three bedrooms and three bathrooms. Okay, so yes, this is a... Uh, okay, let me see which zone is this. This is zone B. The one that we want to check out is actually zone C. So without further ado, let's head there. You have your mail room here. By the way, uh, so for zone B and C, the car park's entrance is also here. Yeah, you can turn up there. Uh, entrance is through this floor, third floor. But for zone A, it's on the other road, which is which is zone A on ground floor. So stepping down. This uh, nice drop off area. This is for zone C. Yeah. So each zones have their own lift lobby. This is for zone C. Typical pavilion quality, pavilion brand again, very luxurious, well known for its shopping malls. Uh, not, not really for its uh, residential arm. Okay, let's head up. Let's go. Stepping out of the lift, we are on the 35th floor. So immediately you get a very nice view of the majestic Kira Tower. Once used to be the tallest tower in Malaysia. 20 years ago. Yes. So it's quite aged very gracefully. So this is zone C. There are a total of five lifts, four here, including one lift bomba. And for all the zones, right, it's actually physically connected. So if I walk towards here, behind this door, it leads to zone A. And then you go through zone A, it leads to zone B. Okay. So really, you have all the units here. Zone A. What way is decent? Five feet, and you notice also that there's no other uh, internal air well. So the lights are always on to keep it bright. Very much like a hotel setup, a service apartment setup. This is the entrance to the refuse room. Very traditional uh, refuse room. A 
And here is the unit that we will be reviewing. It's a Type 2, 671 square feet, one bedroom, one bathroom. So your unit starts from here. So there's only one unit uh, for this particular layout per floor, not just for zone, uh, this zone, but for all zones actually, A, B, C, there's only one unit. Yeah. So very, very rare and exclusive in a way, and, and just a superb view. Okay, <laughs> we'll go to that shortly. But before that, this is the dry kitchen, the dry, in a way, kitchen dry and wet, because here is also where you do your your cooking. Right. Electrical items are all by Electrolux. We've got a microwave, we've got a hood and hop, fridge, and a washer dryer. The DB, and this is the telecommunications box where you have your fiber termination. Single phase. The flooring is compressed marble. So if you've watched my previous video for Pavilion Embassy, uh, Jana Ampang, it also uses the same material. And basically what compressed marble is, it's basically a processed marble using very fine uh, marble dust, you know, or rather marble waste. So when they mine, Marble, right? Usually, there's always waste. If you watch those videos where they cut big, big marble from the marble crush, they are always waste. Uh, only 50%, I would say, becomes marble, and that balance 50%, it's, uh, it's a waste, essentially. So what they do, uh, they basically grind all this marble into marble powder. They add into uh, add resins, and also pigments, color pigments. And this color pigments gives it its design, you know. And compressed marble is actually obviously much cheaper compared to actual marble and actually better in terms of maintenance. It's actually, I would say then harder. Yeah, it's harder, that's the term. It's actually much more uh, solid and harder compared to marble itself, original marble, which is porous. Compressed marble is non-porous and hence maintenance is actually easier with compressed marble. Okay, uh, too much technical stuff. Let's talk about the living room. Look at that. So it enjoys a very, very nice view. Right behind me, Minari Si Hoi Chan. And that is the well. Very famous uh, building. One of the OG buildings, high rise in KL. Of course, behind me here, you have uh, the Petronas Twin Towers. And here, in all its glory, this is Kel Tower. Yeah. Sits uh, within this Bukit Nanas Forest Reserve. Look at that. So I have a very nice... Uh, and then you got this nice latch here. Again, this is the only unit, only layout which has such a latch. So you can comfortably sit uh, and really just enjoy. KL Tower, by the way, is a telecommunications tower. Obviously, it's not an office tower. So you don't see any windows. Uh, and hence, it's just purely to transmit uh, telecommunications in terms of uh, free TV, free-to-air free TV, and also a radio stations. So there are a couple of stations. I can't recall, but I think it's TV1, TV2, and TV7, uh, and a few other KL uh, uh, radio stations. Yeah. Okay, looking down at the forest reserve. So your view is basically on blocks. You've got a building beside, but it's much lower. Again, we are 35th floor. And if you can see, down there is the sales gallery. Interestingly, this sales gallery, right? If you look at the brochure, they just quote that there is a strata bungalow. This is the strata bungalow. Yeah, but I'm not sure of the latest status. I'm not sure if it's still for sale. It was used for the sales gallery. Uh, and then that 
then after that was to sell it 9,000 square feet and the brochure is listed as 31 million but nonetheless yeah nice view okay so you got the, the view of Kel CC you got the view of Kel Tower and in the master bedroom you get another view of guess which tower <laughs> okay let's check that out uh, Switch sockets are by Legrand. So this is the bathroom. You have your water closet there. And here you have a sliding door which leads to your shower and bathtub. So accessories are is by Kohler. Again, American brand, very branded. So Explain a few times about Kohler. More than hundred years old. And Kohler is named after the founder and also the town where the village, rather. Okay, should I call it town? Maybe it's a town now. The town where it's based uh, in the states, in Wisconsin. Kohler. So interestingly, the the founder's name is uh, John Kohler, something like that if I recall correctly and the village is is headquartered even today uh, in Kohler, Wisconsin so all these accessories shower head and so on Kohler if you are a sports fan you will know that a uh, few years back Kohler was sponsoring uh, Manchester United they were the jersey sponsors and this, okay, maybe I should not go from here. Maybe I should go from the main door. This is the master bedroom. Or there's only one bedroom only. This is the door that leads to the bathroom. So you have built-in wardrobes. Bloom soft close hinges. I'm not sure you can see the brand Bloom. solid timber flooring so material finishing wise right it's very similar compared to Pavilion Embassy and even the whole design language windows this big oversized windows that goes all the way up and then you have uh, your curtains right with a hidden helmet there is the data point so from the collection box, you have two data points, one in the living room, one here. So you can uh, pull directly and put a land point directly into your TV. Or if you have a mesh, you can put it on the table and then you have good coverage within the master bedroom. But yes, going back to the view, we have <laughs> Merdeka 118 PND. Majestic. So and just a very nice view, this unit. Look at that. This unit, you can actually look at both. And again, it has this nice window bay latch where I can see it. And I can really enjoy the view. Okay, so where are we exactly? Towards this part, the back. Oh, let me see if I can identify. Swiss Garden. So behind here should be right behind here should be Pudu. Pudu bus station. And there, okay, let me zoom in. 
that's the old Pudu jail. Okay, so yes, if you are interested to get this unit, uh, it's exclusively by Teddy. His contact is below in the description. Do reach out to him. Uh, asking price is one point. Okay, I'm going to disclose one point X X million. Uh, so yes, do reach out to Teddy to arrange for a viewing. Now that we're finished reviewing this unit, let's head down and check out the facilities. Let's go. Stepping out of the lift, we are on level fifty-two, the highest. Floor, so there are no units, residential units on this floor. That door leads to the cooling tower. Basically, the cooling mechanism of the tower. And here, you have your facilities. You have a swimming pool on the highest floor. And look at that. What I like about the unit just now, right? we were somewhere in the middle is that you get an unobstructed view of KL Tower from the base all the way to the top unlike the Merdeka Tower you only see the top because the bottom is covered you know it's partially covered but this full view yeah. okay I'm not sure if this qualifies as a reflexology path because you have river stones here but certainly a path to walk or at least it looks like uh, with a shower shower pot before you dip into the pool they got a few nice cabanas although the orientation is a bit awkward I would say and yeah i don't know it just looks awkward when people walk past and you're facing in this direction but again space is really tight uh yeah land here is ultra premium very very close to the city center so this swimming pool continues on to this area here and basically this area here is your jacuzzi Let's turn it on. Now you get some life. So they are, it's the whole row, by the way. So we have another switch there uh, at the other end. So you can basically walk from your pool, you walk, 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 walk all the way here to your jacuzzi. Switch it off. Very luxurious. <laughs> Typical pavilion quality, the pavilion group, the name. Synonymous with uh, quality. Okay, and around the corner, you have a washroom. Always very curious to check out how is the washroom. Look at that. Very luxurious. Here you have a walkers. And here, you have a kitchen. But I can't scan in. Uh, 
we try to get some photos for the kitchen. Okay? And this. Okay, I think I can scan. I managed to scan earlier. Let me scan again. Yes. It's basically your. Okay, I'm not sure if this is a loophole. <laughs> uh, but what you have here is function room. Look at that. So again, it gets a nice. Oh, this is even able to see TRX. Nice. So from here, I think I can see all the towers on this particular floor. There's the old downtown KL. Okay, so yes, uh, that's all. That wraps up the facilities tour on this floor, level 52. Now we'll head down to level 4 first just to check out the car park. So the car park is a bit special. And then last but not least, we'll check out the main facilities floor on level 12. Let's go! Stepping out of the lift, we are on 3A. And this is the floor where you have your mechanical parking. This is for zone 3. So this is, okay, so there are different types of lifts. This is where you drive in. And we're going to give you a sneak preview of how it is inside this mechanical car park. Look at that. So basically what you do is you drive in, uh, place your car properly, and you step out and close the door and I guess it brings your car up. So there are multiple car parks that you can see here uh, at the base. Uh, X-axis, Y-axis, very interesting to actually see how it operates. Yeah. Nice. don't see any cars, probably it's deep inside, so that's how it works. I probably go up, you know, to reach floor. I, I guess you start with the lowest and then you push your car all the way in. And then again, there, are, there should be multiple platforms that can rearrange cars and hence bring out your car from deep within wherever your car is located. Okay, so yes, uh, that's about it. Yeah, some instructions can okay, to close it back first. So, mechanical parking, the good thing about mechanical parking is that of course it saves space, but it's not cheap to implement and more often than not, when you have mechanical parking, right, it's because there is space constraint. Like in this instance, this particular plot of land, land is obviously very expensive and you have no choice but to make it multi-storey or very high up. And for this type of premium development, you don't want people to turn up and up and up. Hence, this mechanical parking makes sense. So you've got another two mechanical parkings here and this is where the cars come out. Yeah. You actually call your cars and the cars will actually come out. Oh, look at that. So this is actually the sort of the top. So this one goes down. I think you choose from below, I guess. And to call your car, obviously you don't want to be standing here. And hence how you call your car is via this waiting lounge where you have two control panels there. So this is where you wait and chill while you call your car. Two lifts. Uh, yeah, basically it's your time also. Queue number, card number. So, the mic, this card that I have, you can't scan, but if you scan, 
I guess you actually pop up the information and you bring your car down. Yeah. So this is the launch. Interesting. Uh, I don't have a video, unfortunately. I can't enter the car because when you're parking your car, uh, you are supposed to leave the car. You can't sit in the car. So, yeah. But yes, very interesting system. Uh, mechanical parking. Uh, that unit that I showed comes with one mechanical parking or one parking lot. Yeah. And like I mentioned, the benefits is, you know, uh, it's actually much more secure, number one, because you don't have people going to your unit, you know, due to your car, car essentially. And yeah, you don't have to park your, uh, you know, host of other benefits. Of course, it saves. Uh, space, I think that's the key key benefit of having a mechanical parking. And now let's head up to the main facilities floor on level 12. Let's go! Stepping out of the lift, we are on the 12th floor. So this is the main facilities floor. Towards this side, you have your BBQ pit. Nice landscaping. I'm bad at plants, so I'm not going to attempt to name uh, the plants. Single BBQ pit. And the grill is beneath here. They have this stainless steel cover. So if you've seen my previous videos, right, this is actually very similar to the one at Pavilion Embassy, Hampang. And inside here is likely a, I forgot what's the brand, but it's a mobile one, a mobile BBQ pit. But you don't have much seating, actually. It sits about four, and this is not entirely covered also. So if it rains, you will not be able to have your BBQ. So we notice on this level, right? Somehow, even though we are on the top floor, right, because it's so densely packed, so many high rise, so it feels very tight, feels very cramped, and the, the distance to the other buildings isn't actually too far away. This is the reading pool. Right smack city centre. Kids playroom. And that's the swimming pool. So I'm not going to... Uh, there's someone using the... swimming pool. So I just want to be nice. Okay, so we have the gym towards there, but before that, let's check out the bathroom. So the washroom is rather interesting. Obviously very luxurious. You've got your cubicles here. And this part, you have your steam and also sauna. But what's more interesting and what makes it feel so comfortable is that you actually have an aircon here. So it's very cooling. Out of your sauna, <laughs> you take a bath, and when you want to change, because your lockers is here, you have basically chill down really because of the aircon. So this is the steam. The difference between the steam and the sauna is steam uses moist heat or the steam and it comes out from the bottom so there are different pros and cons uh, for steam and sauna but steam is harder to maintain actually so steam is not so common compared to sauna essentially it's boiling water which is emitted from the bottom 
or for sauna, usually it's a hot stone and you put your water on top and slowly evaporates. It's basically just hot air. Okay, I can't switch it on, but it's quite sizable. So it's quite sizable. And here's your hot stone. Can't see. Uh, I love this toilet because you see aircon. It's very, very chilly. A cooling toilet. On this entire floor, in the open and in the toilet, probably the toilet is one of the coldest spots. This leads to your chill-out room. Uh, we don't have access, but we can view it from the other side. This lobby. And this is the swimming pool. So we have a dance and yoga studio, which is also locked. But nothing really marvelous. So it's still okay. And down here, you basically have a jacuzzi. Imagine how how densely packed. Right. That's why I always believe that if you want to get a property within the city centre, right, multi, it's not multi-storey high-rise, always get one that is further away, that's higher up, brother, so you don't see all these surrounding buildings. If you are just above so the unit starts from level 13 all the way up until level 51 i believe 51 obviously is the best uh, 13 and up until probably 20 20 plus is where you still look into the other units around you and hence it's not so nice this is the gym the entrance is the other end uh, but again there are people inside so i just want to be uh, respectful i didn't want to uh, record inside the gym but this gym if you notice they actually use uh, Techno Gym. So it's very, very branded uh, equipment that they are using. Techno Gym. Very, very branded Techno Gym. Uh, this brand. This. That single cycle cycler can cost anything between, I think, 20,000 to 50,000. And even the, the, the treadmills, the premium ones, the designer ones, is close to 100,000. That is how premium Techno Gym is. So this is not the first time I've seen Techno Gym. Uh, the other time that uh, we had Techno Gym equipment is for Park Region at Desa Park City. That also uses Techno Gym. And this is the chill out room. Entrance is that side. Uh, but yeah, if you can't enter, you need access, but you can still have a good look. So you basically have your island there. I think you would have a hop or at least a sink and you have a lot of sitting areas here. So yes, that sums up the review of this particular property. Very, very nice property. Pavilion Group, again, the brand, the luxury. It's really synonymous with uh, luxury. Yeah. The, and, but the design language also, you can see, is very, pretty much the same as Pavilion Embassy Jalan Ampang. Let me know what you think about this property uh, in the comments below. If you like this video, please do share it with your friends and families. To me, obviously location is everything. We're actually very, very near to key. Okay, I'm not sure if that's the landmark, but yes, uh, behind here. We are very close to KL Tower. Uh, if you are a foodie, there are lots of food to explore. Jan Alo is actually very nearby. It's approximately... Oh, it's very noisy. Uh... Okay, but Jalan Alo is really nearby. Uh, it's uh, less than a kilometer away. 
you got KLCC view, you got you got TRX. So all these are extremely close to Pavilion Ceylon heels. Okay? And last but not least, of course, do smash the like button. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you in my next video. Bye!